Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving, and if you're in the mood for some good Mercedes news, then you're in the right place, because I'm doing some more work on the W123. One day it will roll again, one day. So in the last episode, do we call it episodes on YouTube? I don't really know. The last time on, on this car, we were tackling what was turning out to be a far worse piece of rust than I was hoping for and expecting. Of course, that is something you should never do with rust because you always assume that that little Tempe size hole you're seeing anywhere in the car is gonna be that big with the seats falling through it. That's just, should always be a given really. Since we last spoke, I've been cracking on with this. But if you're new to the channel and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, here's a quick recap. About two years ago, I found this thing in a barn in Essex. It had been sat there for the best part of 20 years, gathering dust and not going anywhere. We opened it up cautiously. It turned out there were no bodies hidden in the boot, which was a very real possibility, we thought. Uh, it had been nudged slightly on the front, it had been vandalized, so a lot of wires and the vacuum tubes had been cut, which is a bit of a random surprise. And it took me a while to get it going because I didn't have any keys for it. So I spent a long time getting new keys cut to the lock barrel numbers, which I found out, and it turned out that some of the lock barrels and the ignition had been changed at some point in its past. So then I had to go and source a complete new lock set and ignition set all on the same key, change all the door locks, change the boot lock, change the ignition barrel, which I can tell you is a monster of a job because in 1983, the year this car was built, Mercedes got big on security. So you cannot take the old door locks and ignition barrel out without the correct key. That was a lot of work. Once I had a key for it, I could start looking into whether it ran or not. So I spent a long time on the fuel system getting that going, nearly a year in fact, starting at the back of the car, working forwards from stern to stem, and every turn I found out that the next thing in the line was broken. The fuel pump was dead, replaced that. The fuel filters were clogged, replaced that. Replaced the fuel filters in the engine bay. There are multiple fuel filters on this car, it turns out. Didn't make any difference found out eventually that there were holes in the fuel lines underneath the car. So we replaced the fuel lines underneath the car, we replaced the fuel injectors, we rebuilt the metering unit, the distribution unit, the warm-up regulator. Everything was rebuilt in the fuel system of this car. It still didn't work, then one day it magically did. Well, let's do this. Blimey, that is so smooth. That was the bulk of the problem in terms of getting the car actually to a position it, well, runs or doesn't run. Now it does run, it's able to move up and down the drive under its own power, which is a magical thing compared to the dead thing which rolled sideways off a low loader about two years ago. So now there's basically just two things stopping me from driving this car. First of all, it won't stop. There are no brakes on this car at all. And secondly, there's not much floor either. So the first thing I've been doing, as you may have seen in the last episode, is starting to tackle the big holes, which I've been continuing to work on this week. I'll show you some of that in a second. And secondly, the brakes, which could need to be completely renewed. So first of all, here's a bit of a montage of me doing some welding. More excitingly, I've got some boxes. So the two things I need to be doing are one, welding, and two, brakes. Now, welding is just an awful lot of my time and my very limited patience. And as I've said in previous videos, I don't really enjoy welding. It's very time consuming, and I'm constantly in fear that I'm gonna set fire to the car. So it's a thing I do under duress because it's the only way with the number of cars I've got to keep them running is I've gotta do this kind of stuff myself. If I had Hoovy's budget, for example, to go and farm this kind of stuff out, I would. And so to keep myself interested and happy with this project, I needed some new toys to keep my enthusiasm up. And there's nothing better than shiny new car parts for that kind of thing. So I went online to Autodoc, where incredibly, despite the fact this car is, what, 1983? That is 38 years old. Is that 38? Yeah, cracky, it's actually 38 years old. That's a shocking thing to say. They carry virtually the entire braking system for this car in stock. So I went online and I ordered lots and lots of stuff. And when these orange and black boxes arrived, I was more than a little excited. Because I've been looking at this braking system. The brake lines to the back of the car are rotted through. That's why there's no brake fluid in it, because it's all fallen on the floor. Looking at the discs and pads, they are, well, they passed their best, let's face it. Then look at the calipers as well. They are genuine original Mercedes from 1983, so very high quality. However, they are 
extremely rusty. All the rubber seals are going to be crusty and perished and no good at all. And the chromy bits inside them are going to be way past their best because bear in mind, there's been no fluid on them for decades, frankly. So I've been doing a little bit of ordering. Let's get rid of some stuff. So first of all, we've got the obvious stuff. We've got a nice set of Brembo brake pads, front and rear. So if you're gonna do this, do it properly is what I say. I might cheap out on a number of things, but I do not cheap out on brakes or tires ever. So a lovely set of Brembo pads for the front and also matching for the back. And between these boxes, about 30 kilos of stuff arrived. I felt very sorry for the delivery guy here to appear with the stuff. Then we've also got, in this first box, two Redex black boxes. And these black Redex boxes contain, if I can figure out how to open them, brake calipers. Oh, would you look at that? Brand new, super shiny, fresh seals, fresh pistons, everything ready to just work straight off the bat. Now you may recall a couple of episodes ago, I think I was working on the Volvo that day, I had a new uh, brake flare tool kit arrive because I kind of had this set up in mind. Let's get another one of those. Let's see what the other one looks like. Oh, dear. This is properly heavy. Oh, actually that looks like, aha, sorry. This is, what am I apologizing to you for? This is the front one and this is the rear one. There's a significant weight distance difference between the two. Wow, look at the size of the pistons in this thing. It is a monster, an absolute monster. Hold this up against the original. You can see it is exactly the same, but not rusty, which is a significant difference. Now we've also got a second box underneath it. Also shiny orange and black and extremely heavy. I think the label on this said it was around, hang on, let's say on this. There was a warning about the weight. Something like 28 kilos, I think it said, or 18 kilos. Ah, more packaging. Now, what have we got in here? First of all, a brake master cylinder. Because I'm working on the assumption that every single rubber seal on this car is shot. And it's not even worth trying to fix it. Well, it could be potentially rebuilt, but that's gonna be a huge job and not necessarily 100% reliable. Buying brand new parts, which match everything in the car, will make a big difference. There we go, that will sit in the engine bay. So this is the uh, master cylinder, which isn't too expensive, but my big concern is that the servo behind it is also toast because those are horrifically expensive. That's about 400 pounds on its own, if that is dead. So we'll, we'll work on the assumption that's probably okay. Look, it's got a Mercedes sticker on it. It must be good. Alongside, Oh my word. These are more Brembo parts. This is like Christmas. Check out these discs. Big monster solid disc. Wow, lovely. I'm not sure if that's the front or the back. Crikey, that is heavy. No one of these boxes weigh so much. And in addition to that, we've got two more calipers and two more discs, so we've got a complete braking system. Calipers, discs and pads for every corner, and we've got the brake master cylinder. So in theory, once all this, oops, once all this and some new brake lines are on, we should be absolutely laughing. Wow, this is, God, so heavy. So shuffling this stuff around the garage the last few days has been really hard. There we go, the final set of brake calip of discs. Oh my word. Oh, I think, yeah, these are the front ones. The other ones were the back ones, because this has got a far deeper offset on the dish. <laughs> offset on the dish, whoops. So yeah, front and rear calipers just there. Wow, what a haul. Of course, Brembo being very high quality parts, I have got new little locking screws in the bag as well. So we are sorted. And damn, this is quite the haul. This is gonna make a major, major difference to this car's progress towards the road. So as I say, all of this stuff was from Autodoc, bought online and arrived in just a few days, as always. If you follow a link in the description below, you will find 
where I found all of this stuff. It is quite remarkable the range of stuff they carry on their website. So as I say, 38 year old Mercedes and every vert part pretty much for the car braking system was in stock. It was so easy, so simple to get all this stuff delivered to my door. So thank you to Autodoc for sponsoring this video. And if you follow the links in the description below to Auto.club, you can find thousands of helpful videos with instructions to fit these and many other parts to hundreds of different kinds of cars, making it simple to look after your own car. And find the garage feature where you can keep tracking your own car's maintenance schedules as well. Now, before I fit it, I do need to go and finish that corner and that corner. So I'm gonna get on with a bit more welding. I'm sure you'll enjoy watching that. And in one of the next episodes, I will be installing all this stuff. Right, back to the stuff I don't like. <coughs> Cardboard Eddy design. Well, that's about 40 minutes of work there. So there we go. This corner of the bulkhead into this substructure is basically done. I know it's not an invisible repair, but given that the choice is my ugly ass welding or one of the many notes I've had to the door wanting to buy this car, would have taken it and it would have been around the banger track already by now. So as given the choice of my not very pretty welding or the oval, I think I'll take my not very pretty welding. It does feel pretty solid though, to be fair. So I'm um, 70% happy with that, so we're all good. Now the rest of it. Right, so I've been grinding away at this tiny hole here. Well, what I thought was a tiny hole turns out to be a bit more of a significant hole than I'd originally imagined, as is always the case. Now there was a bit of something hanging down in there, I couldn't quite figure it out. And in addition to that, um, I was trying to work out uh, the logistics of the three-dimensional shape of where this is. Because as you look inside here, where I've just been welding this panel there, that goes into this area under the hinge, the hinge tray, if you like. But this isn't in that same trough, that's somewhere beyond that. And I was thinking it was a box section, I couldn't figure it out. Until I moved this plastic cover on the top of the, uh, well, I don't know what this panel this plug is, it's some kind of diagnostic, I, I don't know. Or well, some kind of connector, anyway. Um, then I realized what I was looking at here was the bottom of this loom. So I need to be rather careful not to go and cut a hole in the wiring loom when I'm welding this or, or melting it, because that would also be quite bad. So whenever I think I've got a nice, easy, little, simple fix, I can just bosh a little plate on there, cut that square, bosh a bit of metal on there, job done. Turns out I've got some really important wiring immediately behind it, so I need to be extra, extra careful not to set fire or melt it. Okay, to try and salvage this uh, loom from being destroyed by either the angle grinder or the heat from the welding, I've gone in with nature's fire break, as in bits of wood, to separate the cables from the, uh, the metal in the hole, and gone in with the, uh, the shorter of the pry bars to just move all these cables away from the metal so the heat doesn't transfer and melt them. Um, I don't think I'm going to weld it right now because it's about to rain. <laughs> so I'm just getting everything ready for, for when I come back and do this later on. I might put some more bits of wood in there as well if I can just to, to kind of protect it all. Well, the rain is about to start again by the look of it, so I'm going to leave it there for the evening and carry on with this during the week. So hopefully next time you join me with this car, I'll have made some more progress and maybe this corner will even be done and I can be working on that corner over there because there's plenty more in that corner. Right, so I'll leave you to carry on with your lives. Enjoy doing fun stuff, watching TV, spending time with your families, going to, I don't know, a cafe or a pub or something. 
I'll, I'll, I'll be here, don't mind me. I, I, I like it out here, it's, it's nice. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, please, as always, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And thank you to Autodoc for sponsoring this video and supporting automotive creators on YouTube, as they say. Help me, help them to help me to help them. So do please go and check out the links in the description below. And join me again next time when hopefully there'll be more progress on this thing.